Hello, Lars. Let me uh, welcome you again to the Data 2020 Summit and thank you at the same time for being such a great input to the summit. This is the second time actually that you are with one of our iBike events. Um, and today you are delivering a very interesting topic, 10 ways to stumble with data. So let's take it from there. Let's start there. There are many examples when organizations implement big data projects. Um, in, in, and yet, somehow, in the process, they fail to deliver its value, the value from them. So, we really love the insight that you provided in the presentation. Can you please go through the, at least, top mistakes um, that organizations do when they actually start these big data projects? Yeah, so I'll bring out, uh, like, the condensed to the three top mistakes, mm -hmm. uh, more or less. So, um, the, the first mistake, which is uh, common primarily in large enterprise uh, mm -hmm. environments, is to sort of go big right away and you know, spend mm -hmm. a lot of money, buy a big cluster, pour all your data into the cluster, bring in a lot of consultants, uh, and, and then hope that some kind of value will emerge yeah, from, from the data. Um, so the, uh, the way to avoid that is to work from the value. What value do you want out of your data? Do you want to build a, a recommendation system to, to personalize your, your user experience, for example? Then start with that you know, one use case and, uh, and work from that use case. What data do you need? Pour that data into your data lake and, and work from there and organize your teams around the value rather than, than sort of push data through the system. Uh, so that is, that is like uh, mistake number one. Uh, mistake number two is to stick to your old habits and rituals that you might have working with environments. The uh, data processing is different, uh, partly because it's offline rather than online. So you can actually allow yourself to make mistakes. If you, if you make mistakes, they don't immediately affect the end user which means that all of the, uh, the careful, prudent rituals that you have in order to protect yourself from mistakes, like you know, uh, staging environments and, and acceptance testing, and all of these is generally unnecessary. They, bec they become like cargo cult rituals uh, and slow you down. So uh, form new ways of working. Uh, look at look at the uh, the leaders in in the field and see how they work, and and start new ways of working from there. You know, start a little incubation area inside the company where you where you're allowed to work in, in your in a different way. Uh, that way, you can move a lot faster. Mm -hmm. uh, and so so the the last of the sort of top mm -hmm. three mistakes is to uh, to have an imbalance in your team. This is really getting value out of data is really a team sport where you need a mix of data scientists, data engineers, and business-oriented people. And they must be in harmony and they must respect each other uh, in order to form, form a great team. Okay, so we mentioned some of the challenges, problems that they face, mistakes they do. So what would be your recommendations for these organizations that have um, either started with a big data project or, or are starting, plan to start such projects? The, the most important piece is to sort of avoid the first mistake that I, that I mentioned. The, uh, start from the value and uh, don't, you know, if you go to a vendor, that, that's fine, but mm -hmm. don't just accept what they're saying because the vendors will have incentive to make you pay a lot of money. So you don't need a big cluster, you don't need complicated hardware, you can do, do lots of magic things with a single cheap machine. Uh, and some open source tools. So uh, start by originating from the value that you hope to get out of the data. Um, and then you need, in order to complement the teams that try to drive value, you also need a commitment from the teams that own the data. So for mm -hmm. example, if a team is sitting on, the, on your user database, mm -hmm. uh, you need their commitment in order to export the, the data mm -hmm. in a sensible format, not just a Turn it up on the floor. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, great. So one one final question: We have technology validated fast enough. 
and along with it, so do these buzzwords and hypes. Um, and, and trends like AI, IoT, augmented reality, uh, they have seems to have taken the uh, I am discussion by storm. And some, somehow, if, if, even if you mention them, it sounds confusing. So what would be um, some of the uh, uh, actually uh, uh, successful tips that organizations can implement while navigating through this process? So yes. somehow they can make it successful in the end. Navigating this landscape is really difficult. There are these uh, pictures out there that say, here's the, you know, the big data landscape for 2017, and mm. you see 500 oh. different icons. In there. It just makes people panic. Mm. Um, so it's, the key is to figure out who to listen to. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're the leaders in the area, the, the companies that really know how to get value from the data, they mm -hmm. are very open with what they do and how they do things. So how do you identify them? First of all, the leaders are not actually trying to sell you anything. So if somebody comes and tries to sell you something, they have their own incentive, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the leaders in the area, they are open just to pr sort of uh, share with the world and to uh, strengthen their brand and for, as an employer, for example. You can recognize them Either they're the major cloud vendors, they are uh, the Google, Amazon, and Microsoft do really good things, and, and uh, the, the cloud services are great these days. And they, of course, sell their, their cloud service, but those services make a lot of sense. And if you can build on them, that, that's, that's usually a fast way forward. Uh, the second way to, to recognize leaders is that they uh, produce open source software. So if you, if you find companies that share open source software uh, and they, they do decent products that become popular, mm -hmm. then that's a good sign that they know what they're doing. So uh, the examples uh, here in Sweden, I, I guess Spotify is the, is the most uh, prominent open source uh, uh, open source providing okay. vendor. Yeah. And um, Airbnb, Pinterest, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, they all share what they're doing. And that's a way to know that they know what they're doing. So mm -hmm. then go to the, you know, your Spark Summit or Hadoop Summit or, or YouTube or wherever and look at their lectures and see what they're doing and follow that lead. Well, Lars, it was a pleasure. Lars, thank you very much. We hope to have you in our next events again. Thank you for thank having you. me.